Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to go through an additional module that you can add to your JASP. It comes preloaded, but you have to add it to your um, menu bar here, and you can scroll over, and what I'll do is I'll show you. It's grayed out right now, but we are going to be talking about visual modeling, and specifically Flexplot. Before we jump into any of the data, I want to go ahead and share that I am using JASP 0.14.1, which is the current build that is available from JASP-stats.org. So let's open up some data and model it visually. Okay, so I have opened up the erotic pictures and love, and this is from the data library. So this is how you can find it um, in your applications folder. If you are on Apple, or if you're on Mac OS, I don't know exactly where all this stuff, the data library is on uh, Windows, but it's called the erotic pictures and love. You can get it through the open data library and uh, ANOVA. That's where I got it from, right? Data library three, ANOVA, there you go. So this particular JAS file that I opened also contains the ANOVAs. Um, and the reason why I wanted to open this one and, and not just the data before we go into the visual modeling is because it has the details about the variables that I wanted to show you. So this is from Bowserini uh, et al. from 2017, Journal of um, Experimental Social Psych, uh, where they uh, had participants look at um, various pictures, erotic or not. And um, it, so that was one of two conditions. And then um, we are going to two by two it with gender, so male or female. Uh, but in any case, we're, we're not actually going to do any of that testing because we're going to go up to visual modeling here. Now you can see that it is not, and the tooltip says graphically based data analysis. So we're going to click on visual modeling and we're specifically going to look at Flexplot. And then in um, other models, uh, in other videos, excuse me, I might look at linear and mixed modeling. Uh, Flexplot does not allow you to have any within or repeated measures designs. So we're just going to look at it um, uh, for this two by two between subjects design. And so here we're going to use um, a dependent variable and we're going to use the dependent variable from one of these. So there are three ANOVAs from this overall data set. And so let's choose pleasantness. Um, so we're going to go average pleasantness is going to be our dependent variable. And let's scroll back down to where it's creating the plot. And so if you just put in the dependent variable, then it's going to give you a histogram, but it's not going to be able to do the whole histogram. So you have to you know, work through it. And also the scale is off too. So just recognize that flat spot is going to try to plot it, but it's not going to be a particularly good plot. So let's put in our independent variables. So let's go ahead and put in gender. And uh, this should break it up by male and female. And as you can see, we have those. Uh, we'll go through some of the ways and um, that we can make this look nice when we get into options here in just a second. But I also want to go ahead and put in, um, now you can put in um, condition as a, another independent variable. And it will attempt to put it as lines here. So how you would normally do it. But we can also take out condition and put it in panel variables and get two separate graphs. And so that's how paneling works. So you can do either or. You can have them on the same uh, th on the same graph by just putting them all into independent variable here, or you can panel them if you really want to. So let's go, let's leave it as paneled for now, uh, just so we can have all of this. And so here we have gender on our x axis, male and female. We have our jitters here, we have our dots, and then we have condition. So this panel is condition abstract art, and this panel is condition nudes. And on the y axis we have average pleasantness. So let's look at options. And now we can control a number of things. This is really fun um, with these sliders. So by default is 0.4. The jitter by default is 0.1, and then in the jitter and y is by default zero. So this is what happens when we increase the transparency value uh, i have to redraw and they get darker so uh, point transparency transparency should really be the opposite because you think if you increase this that it come, becomes more transparent but of course this actually means more opaque when you go up to one so between zero and one so zero is most opaque and uh one excuse me is most opaque and zero is absent so if you didn't want the points and you just wanted the means on here then you would set point transparency to zero let's go ahead and throw those up here at some level of medium transparency here and then jitter. Jitter in X means that um, these, when there are multiple dots next to each other, and forgive the pixelation in the zoom here, when there are multiple dots next to each other, you don't want them right on top of each other. You want them uh, off just a little bit so you can see the cluster. And that's generally what jitter is supposed to do. So if I increase my jitter, then points that are nearer to each other are going to be pushed farther apart as it, see, there you go. So you can, if you increase the jitter, you can sort of see the density in general. And that's how violin plots are made. So I'm going to reduce the jitter because I don't, we don't need that. And if I took jitter completely away, let me show you what happens with jitter all by its zero-ness. Um, there we go. You can see that they're all in a line and um, the means reflected the density at that point. So we have um, sc uh, the scales here on the y-axis reflecting that, although the scale here is really six goes across here, but then there are plenty of points above that. We'll have to, we'll have to see if we can fix that. In any case, that's what jitter at zero looks like. So let's put it back to 0.1 or essentially that. Okay, so that's where we were before. And now if we wanted to do the same thing with Y, let's increase this. Now this scale goes from zero, what looks like from zero to 0.5. Jitter and Y is strange because it's pushing them 
away from each other. And you can see that in the con nude conditions, the line that connects the two dots is being pushed off because what jitter in Y is supposedly doing is it's making the uh, a Y dot offset from a another Y dot on the same Y value, which isn't necessarily a good idea for this particular kind of plot. You might want it in another plot. So I'm going to put that back down to zero. So my con nude conditions does not look weird. Other things that we can add, uh, add here, we can plot confidence bands. So that's nice. Oh, this is all messed up still. Well, that's rough. Um, and then we can change what that fitted line does. So we can either do regression quadratic cubic or no fitted, wh whatever the fitted line does. So we can actually get rid of that line because it's not actually being very helpful. No, I said get rid of the line. Okay. <laughs> um, we can change the intervals to standard error quantiles or uh, standard deviation, quartiles, excuse me, standard deviations or standard errors. Um, but of course, again, our lines, I usually like standard errors as my error bars here. This just makes a lot more sense. Um, and then there you go. Now the theme is really cool. We can do JASP, black and white, minimal, classic, or dark. So JASP is this basic one here. Changing it to black and white gives us black and white. Um, adds uh, this one so much better uh, because the scale is actually here and representative of the scale itself. Uh, black and white, or we can do minimal. Yeah, minimal. Still gives us grid lines, which is still might be useful. Um, we can do classic. Classic gives us that feel, puts nice boxes around the top there. And then finally, dark theme. See what dark theme looks like. Ooh, dark theme. Okay. Good to know. I think dark theme would be only useful if it was going to be in something very specific. But color pal palettes. So GG, um, there are is the ggplot default, which is the package, the R package that uh, underlies this module, this flexplot module is ggplot2. Um, and there are other color palettes. So what nature wants, what AS for the science wants, what um, Lancet, uh, JCO. I'm not entirely sure what JCO is, to be honest. Journal of something. So let's see what the color palette for nature looks like. Let's see if this brings back memories. That appears to be the palette that looks just like Jasp or the ggplot. This, nothing looks like it has changed <laughs> by taking the theme to be different. Okay, so it looks like you have to com combine theme with another color palette. Let's see what happens. Nope, nothing has changed there. Mm, yeah, well, that's, that's a bummer. Uh, those lines. Let's see if that gets rid of the lines. That, there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to get rid of. Ghost lines. So those are those ghost lines there. We don't need those ghost lines in this one um, because we're not, we, we don't have this set up as a two-by-two two table with lines and such. Um, now, if we moved condition up here, that would be the case. We might want ghost lines, but it looks like the color palette for this is not the case if we are using panel version. I think panel version, oh, yeah, there you go, only has a specific role to play. So we have minimal theme, but with the nature color palette, I see now Lancet. What kind of color theme does Lancet have? A blue, a darker shade of blue. Okay, there we go. So that's what that would look like. And then we can change our plot labels here. And so we can change our x-axis to gender. We can actually put in a space for average pleasantness. We can um, add in more descriptive for our legend. And if we had columns back in here, we can add column and panel, row panel labels. So that is how you use Lexplot in Jasp. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this content and this video, please consider leaving a like and or subscribing for more of these kinds of tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.